Good morning. Welcome to St. Anne's Catholic Church as we celebrate the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. The prayer intention for this Mass is Jean Bonrood. All youth in grades 6 through 12 are invited to join us for food, fun, faith, and fellowship at our youth event at the Wadena Roller Rink today from 1 to 3. Sacred Heart Area School will be having a pancake breakfast this Sunday, February 27th, after the 8.30 a.m. Mass at Sacred Heart Church in Staples. Thank you to everyone who responded to the Bishop's annual appeal with a gift for ministries supporting our lives. If you haven't yet made a gift, you can bring your envelope to Mass, mail your offering directly to the Bishop's annual appeal using an envelope provided, or give online. Ash Wednesday is on March 2nd. Ash Wednesday Mass times and locations are available in the bulletin as well as online. Download Sunday is scheduled for the weekend of March 6th. Please bring your cell phone to church and volunteers will be on hand to help download the My Parish app after Mass. There will be a Lenten video by Father Aaron and Father Gabriel each of the 40 days of Lent that discusses a topic of belief of the Catholic faith. You can access these through the ACC YouTube and Facebook page as well as via My Parish app. Father Aaron has asked to be the spiritual director for a pilgrimage to the Holy Land scheduled for March 24th to April 1st. Although it is last minute, there are still spots available for others to join. Talk to Father Aaron if interested in going. Joanne Waltz of Bluegrass passed away. Joanne's funeral mass will be this Thursday, March 3rd, 11 a.m. at St. Hubert in Bluegrass. The evening mass at Bertha will be suspended for the funeral. Please pray for Joanne and her family. Eternal rest grant upon her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Please read the bulletin every week. Download the My Parish app using the QR codes provided in the weekly bulletin, and check out our website, marysacc.org, to stay up to date with events in our area Catholic community of Mary, Mother of the Church. Now let us turn to the Lord with our hearts to prepare to meet Jesus in word and sacrament. me out to a place of freedom. I love you, Lord, my strength. O oh, Lord, my rock, my fortress, my Savior. The Lord became my protector. He saved me because he delighted in Thank you. 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. In our readings today, uh, listen as if you're hearing words of a parent who's offering guidance to their child, especially the first reading from Sirach is precisely that. It's, it's a father offering his son some guidance of life in the world and these, these beautiful images of how to get his soul ready for God in order to live rightly with the Lord God, even now on earth. My dear brothers and sisters, we know that we do not live as we ought. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Have mercy on 
Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's fault when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the te test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it has had. So, does, so too does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind. Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your loving mercy in the morning, and your truth in the watches of the night. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like the Lebanon cedar planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. Still bearing fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is upright, in him my rock, there is no wrong. Lord, it is A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immorality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord 
knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to the teacher. But when fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me remove the splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite! Remove the wooden beam from your eye first, then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person, out of the store of goodness in his heart, produces good. But an evil person, out of a store of evil, produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. We are we're so close here now with Lent. This is our last weekend of ordinary time to really reflect on kind of ordinary discipleship. And we get some, uh, some good readings before Ash Wednesday this week. And so we're given uh, this, this kind of talking points of a father for his son, parents for their children, as we listen through the first reading and it's mimicked uh, throughout the rest of the readings. What do I mean by this? So the first image we get from Sirach is When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. Now, most of the people in the room are old enough to know what a sieve is, but just in case any of the kids, you don't know what a sieve is. Um, They use this for flour, but let's just imagine when you go to the beach, you have some of those buckets that you're making sandcastles out of, and you can stick them into the sand, and you lift them up, and they have holes on the bottom, and you can shake them, and the smaller sand comes out. And the bigger kernels of sand and the stones, that's what's left inside of the container when you shake it long enough. That's a sieve. Okay, and so the the reason they're using this image here would have been when they were growing up at this time of Sirach and all the time of Jesus and a lot of our ancestors. They would have had a mill in town. They went to the mill and everybody that's growing um, wheat at home 
and grains. They'll bring those grains in and they bring it to the mill and they'd watch their parents handing over the wheat and the barley and the stuff that they'd done and they put it inside of the mill and what it is is it's two big stones. There's a there's a big fat stone on the bottom and there's a skinnier stone on top that fits inside and it's sort of it just kind of sits and rest and then you turn it turn it turn it on the top and the two of them grind against each other and then what they do is they put the wheat into between between the two rocks the two stones and they're spinning that top one as the bottom stays solid there and they're spinning spinning they might have an, an ox or a donkey or human beings that are pushing on long sticks turning it around turning it around and all of that grain that goes in there it gets ground up but some of it as it goes through the the shell that's on the wheat the husk it still stays on the grain and if you imagine taking that flour and you were just to make bread out of the flour that comes from the grain being crushed and you still left all those husks on there it's sort of like when you eat fish and there's bones in the fish Ugh right? It's in your mouth and you just don't like it. The same thing with the husks. Okay, so now listen to this phrase and why the Father is teaching this. When a sieve is shaken, the husks appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. So do one's faults when one speaks. In other words, be careful what you say out loud. Be careful what your opinions are. You get shaken up a little bit and you start talking and you start running at the mouth, we will learn very quickly whether or not you are wise or not. <laughs> your sins come out pretty quickly. Put a couple of beers in a group of guys and a group of ladies that are sitting around as friends and suddenly we relax a little bit. We start talking our mind. Just, you know, in a group of people, just throw a little political idea out on the table and see what happens next time you're hanging out with your friends, right? Boy, do we have opinions nowadays. And we all feel pretty quickly like, oh, uh, that person's okay, that person's not, this one's uh, smart, this one's not, right? It comes out pretty fast. And so this is the guidance for us that as Christians, if, we, if we're trying to get ourselves ready for heaven, as followers of the Lord God, may God's kingdom be now on earth just like it is in heaven. And so may our words, may our actions, when we are shaken up, show who we really are and that we would be holy and we would be good. And so then you listen to this next image as the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace. The test is the furnace. What is the potter doing? Well, if you've played with Play-Doh before, you kind of know how this works. You mix the Play-Doh up, and if it gets really dry and crackly, you have to add a little water to it. Okay, right? So you add that. But now a potter, when they're making clay pots, they'll take a whole bunch of clay, which is basically really thick dirt, and they put it on a wheel that's spinning really fast, and as it sits in the middle of the wheel, they're able to take and shape it with their hands. And they have to keep adding water as they go along so it doesn't dry out. And they'll stick their thumbs in it, and suddenly they spread it out as it's going faster and faster. And they, they move their thumbs, and they start growing, growing, and they're making this big, big bowl. And then maybe they make a vase or a, a vase. Right? Okay. They make a vase out of it for putting flowers in. Now, now they have the clay, but that clay is still soft. If they were to push it, it would just all collapse. So now they need to take that clay and, and it needs to get dried out. Now you can put it in the sun, okay, but there are better ways to do it. You can do it really fast by putting it into a fire in the kiln. And so they take it and they put it in the kiln and they, they fire it and it gets really, really hot very fast, and it dries out, and as it dries out, it hardens. And here's the thing, as it dries out, a couple of things. If some parts are thick and some parts are thin, it's not gonna dry out at the same pace. And you might take it out of the fire, and the top looks great, but the bottom, it's all soft, and the whole thing will just collapse on itself. 
or if they didn't put enough water into it as they're making it, it dries out so much that it gets crackly and it cracks as you take it out. The first time you put something in it, it doesn't last. And that's a symbol of us, isn't it? When we are tested, so listen, listen now what it says. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, he tests it in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. We are tested. Our faith is tested in those moments where it's like fire in our life. Suddenly someone dies, and we turn to the Lord God, and what are we going to say to the Lord God in that moment? Or you hear these fantastic stories of a farmer who is standing outside of the barn. The barn is completely on fire. And they're watching it burn to the ground. And they're just, you hear these, these great words come out of their mouth. Lord, thy will be done. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know what's going to happen next. But I trust you. I trust you. That's amazing, isn't it? To have that kind of faith in the midst of a tribulation. Now, a fruit of a tree shows the care that it has had. The fruit of a tree shows the care that it has had. That's for us now. Um, if you look at the difference of how trees grow. Now, um, if you know me, I like killing plants. I put plants in pots, I start to grow them, and I kill them. I'm just really terrible at it. I've had a baobab tree. Um, have you heard of a baobab tree before? I've got a little pot at my garden place next to my house over there. It's in the basement right now, safely. But um, I've been growing this plant, I think, since I got here nine years ago. And the baobab trees, these are African trees. They grow, that when you see them on TV, they're really huge, fat trees with little leaves on the top, on the outside edges, okay? So the baobab tree, and um, I've been growing mine. I've had it now for nine years. It's about this tall, and it's about this fat, okay? Now, I kept it in a pot because I didn't want it to overtake the house or anything like that, but I'm so good at it, it's just really tiny, okay? <laughs> now, listen to the psalm that we heard today. The just one, the righteous one, the one who lives in right relationship with God shall flourish like the palm tree, tall, big, fat tree with big, the coconuts that are on there and the big palm branches that we use for Palm Sunday. Like a cedar tree of Lebanon shall he grow. Tall, big, huge tree. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of the Lord, of our God. What does that mean? Now, um, imagine now when you go to the temple in Jerusalem, there's still today, you can see these trees. They've got big trees that grow on the upper level of where the, the temple mount is at. And you can see these trees growing. Um, if you went to the temple in the time of Jesus, they would have trees growing in the courtyard. Now, imagine that tree versus a tree that might be growing out in the street or out in the desert, which one of those trees is going to receive the most care and is going to be the best looking tree? Well, if it's anything like the church around here, we've got church ladies who come around, they're watering the plants, taking care of them, they'll bring, repot them and fertilize them and take care of them. I mean, we got great plants, right? Now, imagine you're a tree in the house of the Lord God, you over time have had hundreds of people watering you and taking care of you and fertilizing and making sure you're growing nice and big. It's the testament of a well-lived life as a tree. And then you go outside and you see the tree that just gets walked by every day and nobody waters it, nobody takes care of it. It just lives off of whatever comes down. That's a sign to us of life in the church. If you try to live without God every week, constant nourishing, nourishing, going to Mass, listening to the Lord God, it's hard to learn the right way to live. If we don't have parents that hold us accountable and teach us the ways of the Lord God, we can get off track pretty quickly. So to imagine ourselves as a tree of the temple, a tree of the church taken care of, being, being called into check, and so we're constantly being in training 
And our parents, if they're good for us, they'll call us out if we start to speak in a way that we shouldn't. Or they'll test us and they'll say, tell me a little bit about your faith in Jesus. Tell me why we have a pope. Tell me why uh, we pray to the Blessed Mother. Tell us what what color are we going to use now when we go into the Lenten period? What's that time about? What are you giving up for? for, What are you going to do of prayer and fasting and almsgiving? What are what are you doing, my son, my daughter, to grow in your faith during this time leading up to Easter? And so we test, and we see how the growth of the tree is at. Now, why is this important? Um, We look to the second reading. We say Saint Paul encouraging his brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, it's faith that God will come through, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, the strength and understanding that no matter what God brings, I will survive and live through. Then the word that is written shall come about from the prophet Isaiah, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? You know, um, I'm I'm, uh, motivated in a little bit by hearing what the Archbishop of Kiev, Kiev, Ukraine. Anybody heard of Ukraine recently? Okay. You know that that Archbishop sent a letter out to all of his priests this last week as Russia was moving into the city? And he said to his priests, Do not run away. Do not hide. Go into your church. Unlock the doors so that anybody that wants to come in and pray can come in and pray. And when they come in, pray with them. Console them. Remind them of our true life as Christians, that we are not afraid to die in our faith. Live out the Christian life with them. Do not overspeak and do not underspeak. Do not take sides and get political, but live the Christian life with them and be willing to die for your faith. I took that to heart. (laughs) Thought to myself, am I ready to offer my life? What if I were on pilgrimage there? What if I were a teacher? What if I were spending time as a foreign exchange student? and I were living in that city right now, and my life were to be asked of me, would I be ready to stand before the Lord God? And as people of faith, if we've been trying and and testing and growing in our language and our actions, we can be ready to be tested by the fire. Because we are not afraid of death. We know that our Lord Jesus, as He died on the cross, He faced that death. He didn't have to do it, but He chose to do it. He stood in the face of death and just simply said, Father, thy will be done. If this is what you want, if this is my hour, I I receive it. Our brothers and sisters in the Catholic Church and in the Orthodox Church that are over in Kiev this morning, when they celebrated Mass, some of it were in churches, some of them were in bunkers, some of them were in underpasses, under bridges, celebrating Mass just like you and I. And can you imagine the encouragement that they're giving their children? Today we could die, and let's go to church so that if the last moment that we have on earth, it is in service to the Lord our God. If we as parents do not take the time to drill our children and form them in the faith, what will happen if their life is asked of them? We do not need to be afraid of the death of the body, for we have clothed ourselves with immortality. What we do need to be afraid of is our sins. Where where death is your victory? It's not around here, but rather, St. Paul says, the sting of death is sin. That's what I'm afraid of, that I would have done something in my life that if I were standing before Jesus in judgment, I would say no to Jesus because I'm too afraid, I'm too ashamed. He calls me out and says, you did not say the right thing, you did not do the good thing, and I was afraid. And I did not turn in mercy to the Lord God, but ran away. This is our call as Christians. We must rise up, stand with the courage in the face of death, 
train ourselves over and over and over. If it were me, if I were tested, what would I do? The blind cannot lead the blind. It's not going to go anywhere. Rather, as Jesus says in the Gospel today, a good tree bears good fruit. A good person out of the store of the goodness in his heart produces the good. From the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. You need the words of the creed. They're on page 27 in the blue book. Page 27. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In faith, now we turn to our Heavenly Father with our needs and prayers. For Pope Francis' intentions for February, especially for those in religious and consecrated life, that the charisms of Christ entrusted to them may bring blessing and healing to a broken world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and justice between nations, that violence between groups and persons may come to an end. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those elected or appointed as representatives for others, that they may live and work in a manner that is courageous and for the greatest good of those they serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are married, that they may serve one another with joy, patience, and love as they build their home as a domestic church for their family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, that all those who are ill may regain health, and that all caregivers may receive the assistance they need to attend to the sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may pass through death to eternal life and see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, You teach us the ways of your Son, Jesus. Although we will never be greater than our teacher, we can become like him. We can offer our lives to you, and the training that we receive from family and from the church can make us ready to even offer our lives if they should be asked of us. 
Train us, O Lord, and hear all of these prayers. We ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and dark angels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Cloud, St. Anne, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
That is just bring he to my cry from you may my justice come forth your eyes discern what is upright to you my God oh you should be I kept my steps firmly in your paths. My feet have never faltered. Display your merciful love. By your right hand you deliver from their foes. Those who put their trust in you. To you I call for you will Guard me as the apple of your eye, hide me in the shadow of your wings from the violent attack of the wicked. To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my word. As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. To you I call, for you will surely lead me, O God. Turn your ear to me. be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen to you I call for you will surely Let us pray.
Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament in which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I know they're uh, selling the raffle tickets for the Catholic school at each of the entrances. I um, also want to just say a couple of things. One um, is uh, with Ash Wednesday, we do have special mass times for that, and uh, three times here in Wadena, three times at Staples throughout the day. So good opportunities to be able to go to Ash Wednesday. Um, we also had a very difficult decision to make about what to do for the Triduum and for Easter. Um, and we talked about it as staff at length, just trying to figure out what's the best way to handle masses. And, you know, we want to be able to provide it at every single parish. Um, but the, the retired priests that we used at Christmas time, they're not going to be available to us with Easter like, like they were at Christmas time. Um, so uh, we decided that with the Thursday, the Friday, the Saturday Masses, we've kind of been used to coming together as a community into the larger church, and we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to have as few Masses and celebrations for each of those days. We sh we're supposed to be gathered together, parishes together um, for those days, and so we're going to be doing that. The real pinch is with Easter Sunday itself. Um, we know here at this parish, and if you any of the nearby parishes, it just gets really full. And to be able to have enough safe space for everybody to go to Easter Mass this year, kind of getting out of the COVID stuff, we made the hard decision to celebrate all of the Easter Masses in Staples and in Wadena for all of the eight parishes together. Okay, And that's going to... Um, because it's just me and Father Gabriel, <laughs> we don't want to die <laughs> from to, to, I mean, we do want to die, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, maybe there's a better time for it uh, <laughs> than just after Easter Sunday Masses. <laughs> so uh, for our sake and for the, everybody to be able to be gathered together, um, just know that that's going to be how it's going, and particularly for the other parishes that won't be having Easter Sunday Masses at their location. Please encourage, encourage, encourage. These are our masses. These are our gatherings for Easter, all eight parishes together. So wherever people choose to go um, for those Easter masses, it's us together across our parishes. So I am expecting all of the choirs across the eight parishes to be sharing the choir loft. All of the servers from all eight parishes are welcome to get their outfit bring it to the parish that they're going to be celebrating Easter at. We'll fill this place up and a few of the rows of the pews or whatever we need to do to make sure there's enough room for servers and liturgical ministers and all of that, okay? Um, it's, this is an experimental year, and we'll see how it will go with uh, how Easter happens this year, okay? There you go. And I am going to the Holy Land. They called me on Wednesday, said, we've got an opening. Are you willing to go? I said yes on Thursday, and here we're going. Okay, so it's it's uh, end of it's March 24th to April 1st. If anybody wants to go along, just let me know. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.